Hello, welcome back to Bite Size Dentistry. I'm Dr. Shrey and today I am going to be talking to you about the importance of orifice openers. Let's get started. The orifice opening is basically the process of widening the entry into the canal. It's making sure that the entry or the orifice of the canal is wide and while this is a simple process, it is extremely important and crucial to the long-term success of your RCTs. But if you do perform a good orifice opening, you will be assured to have a smooth flowing root canal with a wide visible entry for visibility as well as instrumentation. And on top of that, another major feature is it removes a lot of dentin in the coronal area and hence increases the amount of volume of irrigant that your canal can hold. Which means two things. Number one, you have more volume of irrigant and hence more action of irrigant. Also, more space for your debris to bubble out or to come out as you irrigate. Number one. Now the most economical as well as my favorite way to open an orifice or to perform coronal shaping is to use a Gates Glidden drill on low to medium speed. Now what you end up getting is a really safe drill that if it fractures, it fractures near the neck so you can easily take it out of the canal. It costs an absolute fraction of orifice openers and basically the GG ends up doing a bulk of your debris removal in the coronal segment without costing you anything and taking very little time. I like to use the Gates Glidden in a sequence of three first and then the two and then the one and then I use an orifice opener to perform the remaining balance of the work just to smoothen out the orifice so we get a nice tapering funnel that enters well into either the middle third of the canal or to the location of the first curvature. But two, the free tip preparation. Now in the case of orifice openers, these instruments have a very narrow point such as the SX which has 0.19 millimeters that's extremely narrow and then you have the coronal part which is rather bulky. So what you want to do is you want to be able to introduce this into the canal and make sure that it is actually the sides of the instruments that are doing the cutting. Because of the discrepancy in the diameter on the top and the bottom, if the bottom part binds, you are very likely to fracture that file really fast. Also since torsional strength actually depends on the diameter and the bulk and the blades present in the, in, on the file, obviously it is the coronal parts of the file that are going to be stronger to torsional strain than the apical portion. This will become more clear to you as we go towards the end of this video. Number three, never ever let your night eye instrument touch enamel. What we mean by that is that make sure that you de-roof your pulp chamber completely and make sure that the walls are tilted slightly outwards and when you're introducing your file, you do not want that night eye structure to touch enamel because if it does, it's going to vibrate it's going to wear off very very fast because the hardness of enamel is way more than the hardness of night eye and you're going to wear out those files and initially that sound that you hear when it's hitting night eye is known as the chatter and that chatter is eventually going to lead to shatter so be careful about that de-roof your pulp chambers completely and make sure that if you have a mouse hole prep expand the orifice in such a way that you're able to enter without touching the sides and especially without touching enamel number four now, according to Schilder's principles, as well as, you know, rotary and rontics, we can visualize a prepared canal as one that's a funnel, one that's very wide at the coronal part and then tapers apically. So obviously the amount of dentine removal that's going to be required is much more in the coronal part and much less in the apical part. Keeping that in mind, you have to understand that the energy that is required by the file to cut that dentine is a lot more. And hence, orifice openers are used at a relatively high torque between 3 and 5. The logic is this, most times we are assured straight line access. Now when there is straight line access and the file is just rotating straight, we know that there's almost no cyclic fatigue. Cyclic fatigue is a problem if your instrument is fat, but it's not a problem if your instrument is straight. On top of that, torsional fatigue is what is going to happen in this stage because we are cutting very aggressively, but because the instrument is fat, it's very resistant to torsion and hence it all lands up. Your SX or your orifice opener can be used at a low speed but on a high torque because your axis is straight. So if you have straight line access, you don't need to worry about things. Your orifice opener can be used at a medium speed and an extremely high torque and you're good to go. Another trick that I sometimes use is that when I open a fresh set of orifice openers, I'm able to use them at a torque of 5. But after like 3 or 4 RCTs, just as a precautionary thing, I turn it down to 4 or 3.5 just in case those files have had some imperfections or some uh, stresses that have gotten incorporated and I would not want them to break. So there you have it. 5 amazing points that you need to keep in mind with regard to orifice opening. Number 1. Orifice opening 
makes your root canals more predictable and it's something that you need to plan and focus on every single time. Number two, Gates Glidden's actually reduce the time and the cost involved with doing a good orifice preparation. But when you are using orifice openers that are rotary, make sure that you're using them in the free tip format and try not to engage the tip. On top of that, hand instruments are extremely useful and they'll give you a very good tactile sensation and you'll figure out where to go. While using any of these, do not touch the enamel, it is just going to cause you problems. And when you are using rotary orifice openers, make sure that you use them on a high torque and a low speed because we're not worried about cyclic strain and we have all the total strength in these beautiful fat instruments. Thank you so much for all the support, the comments and the subscribes that you guys are dropping in. It's been great to have you guys here. I hope you guys are having fun watching these videos. See you guys next week and forget to be awesome.